What's up guys, Coach Hayden here with Steel Strength Training. It's good to be back. You may not have seen a lot of content from me over the last couple weeks because I've been out of town in South Carolina, which actually inspired me to uh, talk about today's subject, which is returning to training after a layoff. Now, while I was there, I was trying to remain relatively active, you know, bike riding, walking around, things like that, but I wasn't in a gym setting. So how do I personally, and you, forever's watching, either right now or maybe you might have this experience later down the road of returning to training. How do you walk through that journey of being out of that space and then re-entering into it? The first thing we need to do is talk about expectations. Then we're going to think about our first workouts. We're going to apply those expectations to that training session. And then we're going to think about the long-term impacts of getting back into the swing of training. So the first is with expectations. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the science and what tends to happen when people take a break from regular strength training. Um, so firstly with muscle mass, a lot of people think that after a week or so your muscles just significantly atrophy. We don't really see that in the research. Really when we get closer to six to eight weeks of time away from training, we can see some significant muscle loss. But the times before then, we don't really see significant loss of the fiber content of muscles, you know, the actual contractile tissue of the muscle bellies. But what we do see is a deflation. So when you are regularly training, whether it's for strength or for muscle mass, or really just anything involving weightlifting, we see a swelling of the muscles because there's water retention, there's glycogen that's drawn into the muscles. All the resources that are needed to adequately train and recover are present in the muscle mass. So when we stop training, that demand is no longer being placed on those muscle groups, so they're going to shrink in a sense. But the actual content of the muscle fibers stays intact. When we get past the six to eight week window and we bleed into that two month period, then we start to see some of that fiber content of the muscle decrease in addition to all of those other resources that cause the uh, swelling of the muscle group. So muscle mass is usually the last or the least concerned. Next up is usually strength. So when we think about the adaptations that are acquired when we train, Strength is important, not just from a forced output standpoint, but also because there's a lot of skill acquisition, the repetition, and keeping the skills sharp. That's what is brought along the most by training if we're thinking about strength. Now, when we take a layoff, we're no longer continuing to sharpen and maintain those skills so that when we come back into the gym, we see some sort of decrease of strength. And probably the most significant impact on your ability to train is your work capacity. So if you are taking a long layoff, either you've been sick or you've been in the hospital or anything like that, your work capacity, your ability to do a lot of work and remain uh, unfazed or like your recovery levels from a set to set workout to workout, program to program standpoint uh, is going to be inhibited probably the most out of all three of these. So. With all three of these subpoints in mind, thinking about the timeline that you're working on, if you've been out for two weeks like I was, or maybe you've been out for three months for some other reason, that is going to impact the way that we re-enter into training. And now we need to talk about the first workout. So these are our expectations. We know that they're gonna have some impact on our first training session, but how do we apply that? Well, it, look, it will look different for each person. There are some general principles we can abide by. We want to adhere to a low amount of workload. So what I mean by that is thinking about a sets per exercise standpoint, one to two sets is a safe bet. I would probably just do one set because we are really not trying to overload the system on your first workout after being on a long layoff. It's not going to propel you into further progress if you just beat yourself into the ground when you're not ready for it. Then we have low intensity. Going along with this workload concept, we don't need to push things really close to failure. So three plus reps away from failure is very safe. Any, that three range is probably the top threshold that I would recommend. I want you to be quite a bit below that because of the third point which we're gonna talk about is that it's not about the first workout at all. And I'll get to that more in a minute, but let's talk about why we want these things to remain low. Why do we want a low workload or low intensity? Other than the fact that we know that our capacity has gone down, our strength has probably gone down, and depending on how long you've been out of the gym, your muscle mass may have decreased. 
what these can often be paired with or what the outcome of that is when we go back to our first workout, if we do too much work, we can become intensely sore, we can become intensely fatigued, and it's going to impact later training sessions. So it's not really, the juice isn't worth the squeeze in that scenario. So we want to keep the workload and the intensity on the low ends to minimize soreness and just getting super beat up because we have other workouts to worry about. And that's what it comes to with training and programming and all of that is that it's not about any one workout. One workout has some significance, but it's a marginal significance when you look at it by itself. Maybe one to 2% of your getting back into things plan. But now we need to talk about how it's not really about that first workout. If we're only considering one or two percentage points of gain from that single workout, what really matters is those workouts stacked next to each other. So we have 1% here, and then 1% from the second workout, and then 1% to 2% from the third workout. And when you think about the following weeks and months and years of training, that's where it really starts to matter. So just as you set your expectations and start thinking about this, don't fret about how much time it takes you to get back into it or how long you've been gone. Because when you think about the span of your life, it pales in comparison. So realize that you need to set your expectations. Your first workout is probably gonna be pretty underwhelming. And remember that it's not even about your first workout. It's about getting back into strength training, which you love and which we love to get people into here at Steel. That's it for today, guys. Catch you next time.